This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HP ZBook Studio X360 G5. Got that? So yes, there's a regular ZBook Studio, which is a conventionally designed laptop. The X360 version, obviously, much like the HP Spectre X360 line, is a 360-degree convertible. Speaking of the Spectre, with the ZBook line, they actually that's where the whole gem cut thing started with the cut-off corners over here. Though they don't use it for ports, unlike with the Spectre X360 gem cut. So this is pretty unusual actually and also expensive. It goes from don't ask to oh my god don't tell me how much money it is because this is a professional laptop that mostly companies are going to buy or that's the idea or perhaps those who are considering an 15 inch MacBook Pro for themselves. Dell has a competitor for the professional space. Likewise, it's also scarily priced. But the thing that's unusual about this you don't see too often is this a full six core, 45 watt CPU inside that you would find in any mobile workstation or gaming laptop, much more powerful than an Ultrabook CPU. We have NVIDIA Quadro graphics, it's the P1000 card. And that comes with all of the configurations except for the very base model of it. So Quadro cards typically are for those who are doing CAD work, ArcSoft, that sort of stuff, but it's also good for Adobe Premiere. It's certainly fine for Photoshop and for some rendering as well. So a lot of power in here and also a Wacom pen. We're going to look at it now. So think of this as the Spectre X360 15 inch for the professional crowd. Not that the Spectre X360 can handle some professional chore as well. The build on this, it is built like a tank, even though it's relatively speaking still fairly slim and light for a 15 inch convertible. It's uh, not really super light, but it's not super heavy either, but you'll feel the weight. It just feels quite dense. For display options, there's at least four that HP has listed. Uh, currently on their website in the United States, I see the full HD display and then there's a 4K display that we have that's not the dream color wide gamut one. It's full sRGB, but about 77% of Adobe RGB and 400 nits of brightness nominally. That's what they say. We'll talk about what ours measured in a bit. And then there is the dream color display, which is the one you want if you can afford it. It's a 4K display, but that's not the selling point. It's full Adobe RGB. It's very well calibrated from the factory, so it's quite accurate for those of you who are doing production work for print, for example, where you need that wider color gamut, or for film even. It's a stunning looking display. Now when it comes to the graphics that are driving that display, the NVIDIA Quadro P1000 card is towards the entry level for NVIDIA Quadro cards. For those of you who don't know, Quadro cards are the more professional oriented cards, which mostly means they have very stable drivers. Not that GeForce drivers are that bad either. And they're optimized for things like ArcSoft products, CAD, you get the idea, rendering. Um, it's not the most powerful GPU. It sits below the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti by just a little bit. So in terms of performance, you're not really gaining much over the Spectre X360 15 inch gem cut. But the Dell Precision 5530 2-in-1 does give it a, a run for its money in terms of graphics. That one only has a four core CPU because that's in one of the AMD Radeon Vegas. It's pretty much the business counterpart to the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1. But it does have AMD Vega Pro WX graphics inside which is a little bit more powerful. But the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 and that Precision have some compromises too like the maglev weirdo keyboard and stuff like that. For the rest of the internals, you've got two RAM slots, DDR4 RAM. If you go up to the Intel Xeon, which you can, though I think most people don't really need it. You get a bit more cash, you get EC RAM, ECC RAM, that's error correcting RAM for mission critical applications. You could do it. And anyway, you'll get error correcting RAM if you go with the Xeon model. Otherwise, just your usual DDR4 RAM, two slots, so 32 gigs easily with two 16 gig modules. The motherboard supports 64 gigs. You have a fast NVMe SSD, quite fast. In fact, ours is a Toshiba, but still the benchmark numbers are good. And there are two M.2 slots, so you could have two SSDs inside. This is too thin and too small and too light, relatively speaking, to have room for a hard drive bay. And also there's more room for the bigger battery since they've deleted the hard drive option. Now that display is glossy, at least our 4K display is the non-dream color, which is a shame. And it has a Wacom AES pen. It is the latest generation of Wacom AES with 4,096 pressure levels. So it's a pretty good solution. I like it a little bit better than Ntrig used in Surface products or also in the Spectre X360 products. It's not Wacom EMR, which is a battery-less 
pen technology that you would see in the ZBook X2, which is basically a detachable slate kind of design. I guess they figured if you're going with a 15 inch convertible, probably the pen isn't your primary use. You're just using it for photo editing, video editing, maybe some control of your diagramming, that sort of thing. It certainly works well for that. It's fine for note taking. And even if you're into art, it's, it's decent. It's not class leading, but compared to Waka Myanmar, but it is good. So like I said, we have the 4K non-dream color display, and it's a very competent display. The gamma is decent on it for a full sRGB coverage. Uh, it's fairly well calibrated out of the box, unlike many laptops. But still, you go about $100 more, $120 more, and you can go up to the dream color display, which goes up to 600 nits of brightness and way wider color gamut at full Adobe RGB. So if you're already spending the money on this laptop, I would totally go all the way to dream color. The keyboard on this is very good. Typically, HP does a good job with the keyboards. It may not be super duper deep travel like some bigger ThinkPad mobile workstations, but it's very ergonomic, has good key return, two-stage white backlighting. The trackpad's not bad. It's Microsoft Precision Drivers, but I find the surface too slippery, so it's a little bit hard to have fine control when your finger's going whoop, whoop, whoop. Other amenities are the usual fast Intel 9560 AC Wi-Fi. You have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on this and a full-size SD card slot. A card will stick out about halfway, so it's not really the kind of thing you're going to use for perpetual storage, but given the fact that this has plenty of built-in storage options. That SD card slot is a fast UHS-2 card slot, which is great for those of you who know how slow importing media can be for video editing. So there's a good amount of power inside and is relatively speaking on the slim side. So how is heat? Well, as you might guess, it does indeed get hot. Now we have the higher end Xeon configuration at 32 gigs of RAM. So you get the idea. And the Quadro P1000 card. Uh, by the way, they do list a P2000 on the spec sheet, but I've never actually seen that for sale. But if you get the ZBook Studio, not X360, then you could go up to a P2000 card. Anyway, there it does certainly get hot. Uh, the, the chassis temperature isn't that bad. It doesn't get burning hot. They've done a good job with isolating it. It does have two fans inside, not very beefy heat pipes. But the core temperatures will get up there. It doesn't really particularly thermal throttle, though, in benchmarks or when you're using it for the intended purposes. This is not sold as a gaming laptop, though you could do some gaming on it. But if you're doing things like Adobe Premiere renders and that sort of thing, the core temperatures will get up into the lower 90s, but not hot enough to throttle. HP's thing is to use Bang & Olufsen speakers and do a, do a quad speaker configuration. Two of them are firing at the bottom, two of them are firing at the top. It sounds pretty decent. The idea with four speakers is no matter what position you put it in, tent, presentation, laptop mode, you'll get some audio coming at you somewhere. And it's more like the old school HP laptops insofar as it's not that loud, but it's not bad sounding audio, certainly. So how about battery life? We have a 95.6 watt hour battery in here. That is a large battery. And this is really going to depend on which configuration you get. If you get a 4K display, that's always a hit on battery life. You'll lose several hours because of that. And if you get the dream color, which can go up to 600 nits and you are running it bright, obviously your run times are going to be shorter. We have a fairly beefy configuration with that Intel Xeon and 32 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig NVMe SSD. And I've been getting easily with 150 nits of brightness doing productivity, some Photoshop, a little bit of Premiere on the go. I've been getting seven to eight hours and that's again using some demanding programs like Premiere. So that's not bad. If you go with the full HD display and you're doing light productivity work, I, it's certainly possible you might get 10 to 11 hours on a charge. For a laptop this powerful, that's pretty darn impressive. Comes with a 150 watt charger and it looks a lot like the Spectre X360 charger, which is to say it's one of the more styling chargers on the block. So unlike Spectre X360s, which are just no fun to open, this is a business laptop. So the IT shop is going to want to be able to service it. So we have Torx T8 screws, not the usual T5, so the head hole is a little bigger. They're more robust. I'm okay with that. Phillips head would be friendlier, but whatever. And then you just pry off the edges of that metal cover and captive screws so you won't lose them. And here we have the internals. Not the beefiest heat pipes I have ever seen here, but the laptop does manage. Here is our battery over here. Quite a big battery, takes up quite a lot of space in the laptop. Dual fans, one for our CPU, one for our GPU, which is expected. The speakers are near the edge over here, sort of side firing, which is better than down firing, and the audio quality on this is pretty decent. 
So if you have the optional 4G LTE card, it would be in this carrier here. I imagine you could add it yourself after the fact. The antenna lines are conveniently included and in place. Can't spot the Wi-Fi card easily. Here it is right here. It, it is the Intel 9560AC card with Bluetooth 5.0, which is a good card. It's obviously the little mini version that's soldered on board and not socketed in it. That's two little antenna leads over there. And we have our M.2 SSD. We have a one terabyte. It's a fast Toshiba SSD. And there is a spot for a second SSD for you power user type. So if we pull up on this cover, it's a RAM shield. This is the slot for a second M.2 NVMe SSD right there. And here's our two RAM slots. Now we have the Intel Xeon processor, so we have error correcting ECC RAM installed here, and we do have 32 gigs. So it's pretty obvious versus the Dell Precision why you might pick this one. You get six cores versus four cores. You get a more normal keyboard, that sort of thing. What about HP's own Spectre X360 15-inch gem cut? You got about the same amount of horsepower in there. So what stands in favor of this one is an even more robust build. Uh, I mean, in case you want to bash a burglar, I guess. Well, no. It's just nice to have a good build. It's easy to upgrade this one to access the internals. That's an important thing. And you get another M.2 SSD slot inside. And you have more display options, particularly that dream color display, which is, well, as you know, dreamy. So that's the HP ZBook Studio X360 G5. Obviously a very nice machine and also a very expensive machine, but hey, if your business is buying it, then who cares? Or if you're already looking at high ticket items to get your pro work done with pro apps like the Adobe suite of programs, for example, or doing some rendering or doing some CAD work, that sort of stuff. I, it's very well done. It, the quality of the build is superb on this. You've got Thunderbolt 3, you've got a whole host of useful ports on this. Very good display options. I mean, you've got two different 4K displays to choose from. And obviously that dream color display is pretty famous because it is just wonderful if you need full Adobe RGB coverage and a wide gamut display. It doesn't compete directly with much of anything else too. So they kind of have you over a barrel if this is what you're looking for. That said, they did a good job if you can afford it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.